Boom, boom, boom. What up? What up? What up? We're about to make the follow up calls. Yeah, yeah. What's up? Welcome to the replay viewers and shout out to the live viewers. We're about to make some real estate calls. See if we can get a deal today. Get a deal. Let's make a deal. What up? What up? What up? KT. What up? Miss DJ to you. What up? Damon Hughes in the building. Good to see you all. Make some real estate calls right quick. See if I can find somebody who want to sell their house for a discount. What up, Live Life Invest? What up, what up, what up? Happy 2024. What up, what up, what up? Big deal, bro. Good to see you as well. All right, so let's see what we got here. We got a... Uh, let's see, it looked like this house was up on a expired list it was expired from being on the mls or the multiple listing service it was listed with an agent two bedroom one bath uh the vacant the house is vacant it says it has a new furnace new pipes um and i don't know why it hasn't sold uh just wants to get rid of the house so let's see what she's talking about miss cheryl what up what up Your call has been forwarded to an automated voice messaging system. Cheryl, it's... Uh, Cheryl, don't want to answer. We're going to try her again in a second. What up, Julian? Good to see you. So if y'all could take a moment, give this video some hearts, some likes, some shares, share it out, hit that little thing, share it to somebody who liked that real estate talk. Because I don't know what's going to happen. We might find a deal. We might get hung up on. We might get cussed out. You catch it all right here live in full effect. So we're going to try again. Uh, let's see here. Try her again. I got another lead that just came in too. It's a pre foreclosure lead, but I'm going to call that one after this. Uh, let's see here. They never answer. Okay, we'll hang up on that one. Must not really need to sell. Let's talk to the next one. So this other one, I saw it come in about 20 minutes ago. It's a pre-foreclosure lead. Oh, somebody calling back. Is that them? No, I don't know who this is. Hello, thanks for calling. Hello? Hi? Oh, no, you had a wrong number. We sold that house years ago. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. I'm up here calling people. Somebody called me. Now, they called me about a house we sold back in, like, I don't know, 2021 or something like that. And then they want to ask me, do I still own it? That's why I never, like, my name on a property. My name was never on that property, but I guess after so many years, something happened and connected my phone number to that. Uh, whoever skip traced that, so we don't know. So back to the lesson at hand. So this lead came in about less than 20 minutes ago. It's a three bedroom, two bath. Hmm, that's weird. Came up on the foreclosure list. It says this the seller is not motivated but open for a cash offer, but they're also on the pre foreclosure list. Are they ignoring that they have an auction coming up? We don't know. Let's give Mr. Luke a call. Let's see what he's talking about. Luke. 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 Real estate calls. Hey, Luke, 
this is this is Chris. You had spoke to my assistant a little bit ago about your house on uh, Sheraton. How are you today? Good. How are you? Good. Good. Did I catch you at a good time? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I was just trying to get back with you. I'm actually the buyer. Like I said, you spoke to my assistant, and uh, they, they indicated that you were interested in selling it. Um, is that correct? Uh, yeah, I mean, I'd be interested in what you guys uh, would offer. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, about that, I actually put in uh, the Google machine just to get, you know get an idea of the house, and it says something on there about an auction. Have you did anything to prevent that already, or something, or? Uh, yeah, I'm actually in the process of taking care of that right now. Oh, okay. What happened? Um, uh, you know, just got a little behind. So, but I I got it figured out now. Oh, okay. So, what do you plan on doing? Just catching it up or something? Or yeah. Okay. Yeah, because you know we do specialize in helping people who you know come across situations like this where we actually, you know, work out a deal, make sure you're able to, you know, move on and start over if you want to do that. I mean, are you yeah. really looking to move or something? Or are you really rather try to save your house and just keep it and live in it? Um, yeah, I mean, there for a while, I was thinking about, you know, selling it. Uh, but I mean, you know, it's an asset, so I'd rather, you know, try to keep it, um, you know, rent it out. But I just started my, uh, my own business last year so it was like you know pretty hard to just a tough year you know first first year business and just trying to make trying to make it work so oh wow what kind of business do you have uh hvac great wow you know we just replaced uh uh furnace and that stuff is going up 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 so yeah oh yeah <laughs> yeah oh yeah and everybody's went out during this last winter storm, I think. A lot of people were crying about it on the internet. My heat is out. And I say, yep, yeah, not this season. So that should help out to get some business rolling. Yeah. How long have you been doing that for? Uh, about, I guess coming up on, shit, 15 years. Oh, wow. You've seen the market shift all around then. Oh, yeah. Great. Well, we are definitely interested in uh, buying the house if you want to sell it. But, you know, I don't like to, you know, force anybody to want to sell. If you don't really want to sell it, I don't want to, you know, waste your time on it. You know what I mean? But if right. you do want to sell it, you do have options. And we can make sure that, you know, you're taken care of and um, it's a smooth transition for you. So you said this was a rental property or you would rather move out and set it up as a rental property? Yeah, that's what I, w I would rather do is uh, move out and set it up as a rental do you have rentals already? Uh, no. Well, you know, that's a whole nother world in that real estate. You know, we have a lot of houses all over town. So as long as you have good management in place, it kind of helps. But yeah. it, it don't solve all problems, you know. Right. Yeah. I've got quite a few buddies that uh, have rentals. So there you go. It's, uh, you know, like I said, I'd rather just hold on to the assets. Uh -huh. So if you were to sell it, did you already have a place you can move to and everything? or? Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, uh, let's see here. So, I mean, there's a couple of different ways we can go about this. Um, I can get you a cash offer for it, no problem. Uh, but also, many times uh, we're able to structure something more creative where we can put more of the money in your pocket and uh, you uh -huh. know, pretty much solve your situation like that. Um so, I mean, how much is it in arrears? What's that? How much is it in arrears to, like, catch up the loan? Uh, well, I, I think I'm, I, I'll, I'll know if I'm caught up within 30 days, and I should be caught up uh, on it. So it should all be good. I'm just waiting to hear back from the mortgage company. They said they give me 30 days. Uh to review everything and make sure that everything's good with what I did, so. So what are they doing, some type of loan modification or something? Uh, no. Cause. No, they're, uh, yeah, I mean, I, that's, that's one thing, like I've kind of, I guess kind of researched, like, you know, I guess with the interest rate, like, you know, I could almost like sell my loan, like the loan itself, like, somebody take over my 
Yeah, we've definitely done that in the past. And that's kind of what I was alluding to when I was speaking about the more creative option, you know, and it doesn't work yeah. for everybody, but every case is different. Uh, what what yeah, kind of interest rate you have on there? What's that? What kind of interest rate is it on your loan? I think it's 5.4. So it's a little up there, maybe 5.6. Yeah. Well, it's a little lower than what it is today, you know, because we take over loans and stuff as well. We've taken them over at 2%, 3%, loans you can never even get today, you know, so <laughs> yeah. you can never yeah. get a loan with that kind of interest rate anymore. And that's why I was right. asking, you know, uh, did they give you an amount to bring the loan current? Uh, yeah. Yeah, they did. Current within, you know, it should be current now, but they they just got to review everything and then uh, then I'll be back on track. Yeah, because from what I'm seeing online here, it has an auction scheduled for February. What is this? Look like early February, and so you know you don't really want to play around with them. They'll play games and drag you along and and still take the house, and you won't have any options. So we don't want that to happen. We want to make sure you're actually compensated and get something for your house, and instead of them just taking it, you know what I mean? Uh, yeah. Uh, so, so if you were able to, you know, do what you said called sell the loan, I mean, what, what would be like an ideal situation for you? I mean, what looks like a perfect scenario in your mind? Uh, well, it not going to auction and then, uh, I just, yeah, maybe, maybe I'll, uh, talk to them. I'll email them back. Um, and see, you know, ideally I'd like to just keep it, you know, but I guess if not, I'd just sell it outright. Yeah. How much you still owe on it? Uh, like 170 something, 175. 175. And then the monthly payment every month, what is that? That's 1260. And you, what do you think you could rent it for? Uh, honestly, there's really not a lot of renters down there, so I'm not, you know, it's kind of hard to like judge the market, you know, yeah. uh, I mean, I, I would think probably 1500 at least probably more. Yeah. So let's see if you rented it for 1500, uh, you would get about 250 cash flow. And you have to keep some money in reserves for repairs. I mean, and yeah, tell me a little bit about the condition of the house. Is there anything that needs to be updated, repaired, fixed, anything like that? Uh, I mean, it's got a new roof, uh, kitchen. I mean, it's, uh, I, I, it, I think it's been updated since it's been built, but it's not, I mean, it's, I've been there 10 years and haven't updated it, so I would say you know, bathrooms, everything, not, not updated. Okay. Yeah, that's Original HVAC. Well, Luke, um, what we've done in the past, like I say, for situations like this, we were able to, you know, catch up the arrears on the loan, uh, keep that loan uh, in place, and then we would actually give the seller or the person, you know, selling the house some money to move on and start over life again and uh, take over that property and just, you know, continue making that payment going forward. Uh, what about okay. that would not work for your situation? What's that? What do you think about that? Uh, what, what what about that would not work for your situation? Um, I mean, that, that seems like it would work. So you, so you saying you'd like bring the loan current before February yeah, we stopped the auction. So let, let me be clear. Yeah. We're, we're experts yeah, at, okay. at preventing foreclosure auctions. That's really our main specialty bread and butter. We do, okay. you know, yeah. multi, we do these deals all the time. So, you know, every case is uh, different. Sometimes we can just do a cash deal, but m many times that doesn't work in the best, uh, you know, interest of everybody. And so we like to make uh, a situation where it's a win-win all the way around, where you're happy, you get some moving money, where you're not stressed on thinking about making those payments or catching it up. And you can, uh, you know, move on and, you know, just start over again and not have to worry about that house anymore. Yeah. How much was yeah, it in arrears, you think? How much did they tell you that it's going to cost to bring it current? 
Um, I think it was like eight thousand, maybe seven thousand, seven or eight thousand. So about eight thousand plus their attorney fees and junk fees that they throw on top of it, stuff like that. So probably closer to ten. Yeah. Okay. That's not a problem. And then, so for you to be able to, you know, move on and, uh, you know, go to a different place, I mean, what would you really need to make that happen? Uh, as far as, like, money-wise? Yeah, money-wise. Um, maybe another 10. So like 10K in your pocket at closing? Yeah. And uh, catch up the arrears, and then we pay the closing costs. Um, hmm. I mean, well, it sounds like it's something that may be possible, something either that or something pretty close to that. I mean, if we are, were we able to structure something like that, I mean, would you be ready to get the process started today? Uh, possibly. I think, uh, I think before I would make a decision, I'd, I'd want to hear back from my, you know, mortgage. Because I, they just uh, sent me an email yesterday saying that they got uh, acknowledgement of correspondent received. So please let the email receive. Um, yeah, so we appreciate the opportunity to review and respond to the information and concerns noted. Um, they said, like, upon our review, a representative of our company will provide you with a response as quickly as possible, but no later than 30 business days. Yeah, well, I hope they move closer than 30 days because, you know, they only give a 21-day notice in the state of Missouri for auction. So it's already within 30 days right now. Uh, you know. Oh, yeah. So hopefully they don't drag their feet. And we have dealt with lenders in the past that tell you one thing and then they play around and they wait to the day, you know, three days before the auction and say, oh, unfortunately, we weren't able to help you. Like, we could have told me that two weeks ago. You know what I mean? What lender is yeah. this, by the way? Which lend which bank? What's that? Which bank is this? Which lender? Uh, Gill. Gill? Yeah. Oh, I never heard of that one. G-I-L-L? -L? Uh, G-I-L-D. Oh, Guild. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, you know, so like I said, we, we work these deals all the time. So I would say uh, you got a couple of different options here. One, you can reach out to them like you're saying, or if you want, we like I said, we specialize in this. We negotiate with banks and things all the time and make them move their feet. And we actually have a dedicated team that works on this stuff on a regular basis. So it's not, you know, a hardship for us because I know even following up with them can definitely be a job in itself. Oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> so you'll be calling them and calling them. They're not responding. So we really get a person in their loss mitigation department. It really kind of helps speed up the process. You know, did they give you a representative yet? What's that? Have they given you a representative or a person that's handling your account yet? Uh, no, I just got one from, a, I mean, where I got the email from. A generic. Girl, so I don't really uh, talk on the phone a whole lot. Yeah. Well, so here's what I'm going to do, uh, Luke. I'm going to um, I'm going to do some more research on this uh, property. See what we can actually do as far as the numbers. Uh, what I would need from you is uh, I'll send you a text with my contact information, our website, everything, so you know who you're speaking to. Because I know a lot of people may call or you know things like that. We want to make yeah. sure you know who you're dealing with. We're really credible. We really help a lot of people in these situations. So um, the real deal is here, um, and you do have options, and we'll get you some options and see what we can do for you. How does that sound? Okay. Sounds good, yeah. All right, I'll send you that here, and uh, I'll check back with you here this afternoon. Is that okay? Uh, yeah, that's fine. All right, that'll work. Thanks a lot, Luke. All right, thanks. All right, bye-bye. Well, I was like pulling teeth to get him to answer a question. Let's see here. So I just want to get that. I'm going to send him this. It was great speaking to you today. Learn more about us at our website. What is the best email address for you? Yeah, so I'm gonna actually send him some paperwork to make that paperwork. What up, Lisa? What up, LeGray? What up, S. Bell in the building? Good to see you all. So for those that don't know, my name is Chris Monroe. It's the student master teacher, Mr. I Stay Woke. And today I'm doing some real estate follow-up calls. I buy houses in St. Louis in the metro area. 
and I wholesale nationwide, so I can do a wholesale deal anywhere. Really could do a deal anywhere, to be honest, but my really buy box is more closer in the St. Louis area. So that person we were speaking to right there is in pre-foreclosure. Um, they have an auction set for February 8th. Uh, for some reason, he's being told that, oh, we're going to work on it in 30 days, which is, you know, fluff. Yeah, I had to ask about 10 times, do you like that, Slim? I had to ask 10 times how much was he behind. But see, that's the key. I want y'all to pick up on that. When I'm speaking to a person and I ask a question and they dodge it for whatever reason, all right, we'll let you play it off. But guess what? I'm coming right on back and I'm going to still ask that question again later and I'm going to get that information. So he says it's about $8,000 in arrears. He thinks he's going to get $10,000 in pocket. I don't think that's going to really work. Probably closer to five. I mean, if his house isn't messed up. I mean, it seems like it's in okay shape. I don't think anything crazy is going on. Uh, market value, according to Zillow, is about two ten. So if he owes one seventy five, and we get the property, you know, we want to get in for, you know, under twenty k entry fee. So generally, general rule of thumb when we're talking about a creative deal, we want to have an entry fee, meaning all of our expenses to get into a deal less than ten percent of the purchase price, so or or the value of the house. So um, yeah, we're right in that area right now. And that's why I just asked him. I mean, we probably can't really get him that, but uh, we'll see what we can do. So he's, I had to get him warmed up. You know, he didn't really fight back too hard, but he really was dodging questions like Mayweather. I was like, damn, don't be dodging, man. So yeah, we will buy this house subject to the existing financing. That 5.4% interest rate isn't all that. I mean, it's better than what you can go get a loan for today. Um, but, you know. And it's not a bad looking house. I mean, from the pictures, you know, that don't really mean anything just because I see that. Let me see if I can pull it up for you. If you want to see what it looks like. Y'all want to see what it looked like? Why did it take a slanted picture? Like, what the hell is that? They took the picture on a slant. So let me let you see what that looks like. Wait a second here. Got all this stuff back here. Papers. Receipts. Show me your receipts. All right. So, yeah, this is the property here. Flip. That's what it looks like. Cute little house, nothing special. Um, I don't know what that is on the outside of his house. That's what I'd be looking at, like the uh, debris. Look like that's a two car garage. It is a two car tuck under garage. Uh, AC unit is there. He works in HVAC, so that helps. And so, yeah, clear street. And these are just the pictures they take when you uh, go on into auction, basically. So, nothing special there. They don't show any interior pictures. We don't know if the inside is totally messed up. But it looks like an okay house from here. So we can definitely do it. And I like the fact that he alluded to, oh, I want to sell my loan. Wow, I never heard a seller come at me saying they want to sell their loan. Uh, yeah, we are not going to give you too much. So his payments are twelve fifty. I did not confirm that that was twelve fifty PITI, but it really won't matter because for me to move forward, once he uh, responds back to my uh, my text message, I'm going to ask him for his mortgage statement, his last mortgage statement. And then I'm going to move forward from there and give him an actual offer and, uh, you know, buy the house all before February 8th. And February 8th is like, what, 19, 18, 19 days away. It's pretty close. So this is more than enough time. If the seller's willing to play ball and actually move out, he says he has a place to move to. But, uh, you know, those type of people, you got to kind of warm them up. What would you do with it? Rent it? Wrap it? That's a good question. You may have heard the saying, the fortunes are in the follow-up. Now there's a brand new system that is great to help you cold call, text message, drop voicemails, and so much more, all automated. You don't have to remember anything. Just set it and forget it. All you have to do is speak to people. Check it out, WokeReply.com. It's a multi-touch marketing campaign where you can schedule to send text, voicemail, email, and even live calls all on autopilot. Check it out today, WokeReply.com. That's WokeReply.com. Enough time. If the seller's willing to play ball and actually move out, he says he has a place to move to. But, uh, you know, those type of people, you got to kind of warm them up. What would you do with it? Rent it? Wrap it? That's a good question. So I have multiple options I can do. I can uh, wholesale or assign that deal to somebody else that wants to buy it. I can close on it myself and buy it. Rent it out traditionally, which I would probably never do traditional rent. Because even he said it would only rent for about $1,500. And if the payment's $1,250, I don't want to rent for $1,500. That's no cash flow in my mind. 
Although, a little nugget here for those of you that don't know, when you buy these deals creatively like this, subject to, and they're living in a house like this and they have insurance, when we put our brand new insurance policy on, we're able to actually get a lower price every month on the insurance. Our non-owner occupied policy costs less than a homeowner occupied policy while you're living there. So that twelve fifty probably can drop down to maybe, I don't know, eleven fifty or something, or maybe even eleven hundred. So depending on what he's paying for insurance. Many times homeowners are paying three hundred dollars a month in insurance. And I'm like, damn that's high. And we paying like sixty dollars a month. So hopefully that's a lot of that twelve fifty is insurance premiums. Uh, so it will be a lower price, but I don't like to underwrite it under that. I underwrite it under what it has right now. So twelve fifty. Question in the chat. Please help me understand the entry fee. So entry fee. When we're talking about a creative deal, a subject to deal like the, the phone call we just got off of, what does it cost to get into the deal? What does it cost? Arrears, real estate agents if they're involved, wholesale fees if they're involved. The seller, if they need money to move or whatever they need, um, repairs, you put all that in a ball and say, hey, bam, what is my entry fee? What does it cost me to get into this property, to buy the house and get the deed transferred? That, my friend, is what we talk about when we're talking about an entry fee. And it's made up anyway, so it's just an internal jargon, just like everything else we talk about in real estate. But yeah, that insurance in information is great, right, Mike? So yeah, so I don't like to underwrite the deals under my price because I know I'm gonna have a lower payment than 1250 once the insurance kicks in. My payment might go down to I don't know 1100, but hopefully you know we'll see. But we gotta go step by step with this process. Any other questions about that particular call? Any questions while I go update the CRM? Spoke to um, O's about. 175k uh payment is 1250 payment and what else 8k in arrears approximately here's another gym you want another gym let me know you want another gym uh in arrears and he wants 10k in pocket He ain't getting that though. He don't know that. I ain't gonna tell him that. But it doesn't matter. So there we go. Um, when it comes to arrears, you may not end up end up paying arrears if you can stop the auction. Which that's the first thing I'm gonna do. To be honest, when he's ready to play ball, I'm put him under contract and I'm gonna stop the auction. It takes about a day or two. I'm gonna send over the documents, get the auction stopped, uh, and then we can work the deal. Now about those arrears it's possible to uh, get those put on the back of the loan or a loan modification, but we have to stop the auction first. It gives you more options when the auction is stopped, but he has an active auction coming up in a few weeks. So we got to stop the auction and try to buy the house. Um, but it's possible if you get a seller that's on board that's willing to deal with all the things to get those arrears put on the back of the loan and not have to be brought to bring the loan current. And they just keep the loan in place like it was. So that's a little nugget for you, a little gem. <laughs> so yeah, that's what we got on that one. Any other questions on that? Uh, God's Daughter says, what CRM are you using? Uh, right now I'm using Podio. Podio. P-O-D-I-O. Podio. Let's see here. Any other information I need to add on here for him? He's living in it. Yeah. So, yeah, there it is. Perfect. So, yeah, Podio used to be free. I think they started charging people now. I know we pay for it now, but it used to be free back when I started in 2018. I guess they said, we got to get some of that money, man. That's money, honey. We got to get that money, man. Uh, let's see what we got here. So, that's that guy, and we're going to put him in as a follow-up auction set. Oh, yeah, auction date. 8 February. So once he responds to that text, we can move forward and see what's next. Let's see who else is on the list that needs to talk to Chris. All right, we got a Tatiana in here. Who is Tatiana? Is this somebody? Yeah, this house up on the north side. 32,000, three bedroom, one bath. 
they buy and sell properties and they have a lot of properties for sale. So it sounds like a wholesaler. I don't know, but I'm going to call them anyway, see what they're talking about. Uh, let's see here. She got a 305 number, a Miami number. Just got back from Miami. Was down there in that sun, having a little fun. All right, let's see here. It's pretty. Let's Our call has been forwarded to an automated voice messaging system. Three, zip. Why are they gonna send me straight to voicemail? That's dumb. Let's try again. Then I'm gonna send her a text and we're gonna move on. Our call has been forwarded to an automated voice messaging system. Three. That's dumb. Hello. Calling you back about your house for sale. Call back any time. I really don't want her to call back any time, but that's fine. <laughs> So I sent her a text, so hopefully she'll respond and let's see what else we got in here. I was gonna leave that in the CRM as well. Attempted to contact, didn't pick up. Uh, we're gonna keep it moving. Oh, that's, they listed it as a FISBO for that house I just tried to call. She's probably getting hit up. That's a cute little house. 32,000 is a lot over there though. Not on that north side. All right, we're going to move on from that. What's your favorite list to call? Pre-foreclosures by far, because they actually have a reason and they have some pain. And they's like, hey, it didn't came all the way up to this point. Uh, we throw a little money, solve their problem, and we get the house. And we, especially if we find one with that 2%, 3% interest rate, even though that guy said he had 5.4, which he may not even know what his interest rate is. Many times I ask these sellers questions and they don't even know. They don't even have a clue. Like, oh, well, damn, I got a 3.7 or I got a whatever. And you look and you like something else. Or sometimes they don't even be right on the payment. They'll say, oh, my payment is 12.50. They send the thing over and it's like 12.10. And I'm like, oh, great. I'm glad they didn't know what their numbers were, you know, but it happens. It happens. It happens. Let's see what's up with this guy. This is a follow-up for Paul. I sent him an offer. What was that, last week? Uh, let's see here. I think I told him I could do like 9,000 down, something like that. I don't even know if I can do that, but that's what I offered. Because he's got a free and clear property that he inherited. But let's call Paul right quick. This was the guy that, uh, I don't know if you saw on my stories or my uh, postings. He was the one talking about the haunted house. So that's this guy. He said the house is haunted. Let's see if that ghost is still available. Oh. Hey, Paul, this is Chris. How are you today? Uh, well, how you doing, Chris? Good, good. I spoke to you last week about the house over on Coles. Uh, I was trying, yes, trying to see if you get a chance to check out the email I sent you. Uh, no, I have not. I've been I've been in another hospital. Oh no, you you got something going on? Yeah, um, basically I got I broke my neck. I got into, I got hit by a car and broke my neck in my back. I got herniated disc in my lower spine. So what? Right, that just yeah. happened recently? Yeah, it just happened recently. Dang! Wow. Yeah. I hope you get better but, soon. Yeah, I look at your I look at your email now. I I just got out of bed, so. Yeah, so uh, it's give me a little bit and I'll look at it and I'll, 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 I'll send you back an email. Okay, no problem. Thank you. Just wanted to follow uh, up thanks, with you. Chris. All right, bye bye. All right, bye bye. What is that about? He done broke his damn neck. <laughs> That's crazy. That dude got stories. If he had stayed on the phone, you would have heard some of his stories telling me about 100 houses and he broke his neck and he wrote on. Like, boy, you got a lot of stuff going on, buddy. You got life, you got life issues. But that's what we're looking for when we're talking to sellers, people who got problems. You know, a lot of times you think, oh, I want to run away from the problems. But everything you're looking for is there. Did somebody just text me back? What was that? Something just came through on Podio. Oh, that was just somebody else. Maybe the ghost did it. Ha <laughs> ha, you funny. <laughs> you never know. The ghost is nearby. 
Let's see. Did Luke write back? Nope. Luke didn't write back. The ghost know he's trying to sell the house. Kill his ass. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> so he messed up for that. You trying to leave me, mother sucker? Nah. <laughs> Y'all messed up for that. The ghost said, you're going nowhere. Where you think you going? So let's see here. Uh, the ghost is not having it. Who else is in here? Who else? We talk, We try to call Cheryl. We try to call... Who is Suzanne? Who is this person? Oh, they didn't have no pain. Why are they even still in here? Get them out of the CRL. This is the lady I spoke to talking about, yeah, she's in South Carolina and they're halfway through a renovation. So I can't do anything with that, really. Not, not in real life. I mean, unless they got some pain. Who is this Trayvon dude? I don't really want to mess with him, but I'm going to call him anyway. He's in here, so let's call him. I can't be neglecting leads, even though I know I don't want to buy the house. But that might be a good thing that I don't want to buy the house. You might get a better deal. That's happened before. When I'm, I'm trying to pull away, and they're trying to pull it toward me. I'm like, damn, I don't want it. You get, you're get, you going to make me take it? I'll take it. Hey, Trayvon, this is Chris. You spoke, yes, to, you spoke to my assistant about your house over on Ruskin. Did you get that sold yet? No, he didn't He didn't come yet. Uh, did you get the house sold yet? No. Oh, okay. Is that the only one you're selling or you have some others? Yes, this is the only one I'm selling. Yeah, did you have a moment now or are you, you tied up? Uh, no, sir. Uh, uh, I was I was waiting on the best to be here. Is he on his way? No, 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 no. Uh, I don't know. You may be mixing me up with someone else. So oh, I'm, a, I'm a whole other guy. That, oh, okay. I'm a real buyer. I don't know who you were talking to, but I'm the real guy. No, that really, buy. <laughs> no, I ain't sure. but sure, yeah, I will call you back. I got something to say. All right, that's fine. Thanks. All right, I'm calling you right back. Get off my phone with that jump. He got me mixed up with somebody else. Another investor is looking at it. Put that in there, and then I'll remember who this person is later when I look back. I like to keep little notes to, to keep, because these people, you can get confused with who the hell am I talking to. He was talking so fast, sound like he was trying to get off the phone, so I don't want to interrupt nothing. Uh, let's see, did I speak to this guy? Where is this house at? Oh, yeah, I spoke to this dude, too. That dude was crazy, talking about 100000 down. Well, anybody give you no 100000 are you on crack rock? No. Maybe he is. He was a savvy investor to say he did over 7,000 real estate deals. Hmm. Keep it. Uh, let's see here. Who is this Shamika? Let me see. This is a follow-up. Um, so I sent this lady an offer for uh, less than what she owed on it. She owes sixty-seven. She wants ten thousand in pocket, but she said she was not interested in in terms at this time. And that was two weeks ago. Um, I sent her a multiple offer, so I told her I can get her. Did I tell her I can get her ten thousand at closing? Damn. Maybe I did. Can I get her that? Did I tell her something I really couldn't do? Maybe I can. I don't know. I told her I could take over her loan and give her $10,000 at closing. So let's follow up with her right quick and see what she's talking about. Shamika. She didn't really want to do any terms back when I spoke to her, but she did want to sell the house. So just wanted to follow up with her and see if anything's changed. And that was 13 days ago when I spoke to her last, looks like. What's a good interval to follow up? Two weeks, you think? A week? Two weeks? A month? When I send them offers, I'm following up every week or two if I can, if I ain't busy. <sighs> Let's see here. Shumika.
Hey, Shamika, this is Chris. How are you today? Pretty good, pretty good. I was just following up with you about your house over there on Thurlman. Uh, did you get it sold yet? Uh, no, but I do have a realtor I just enlisted with a few days ago that's going to be putting the property back on the market. Oh, wow. Did you get a chance to check out the offer I sent you? I did, uh, but it, I wanted to work with, uh, with him. Oh, okay. Well, you, different avenues. I appreciate you for checking in with me. All right, that's fine. So you're just going to put it back on the market and see what happens there? Yes, sir. Okay. When should I follow back up with you? Um, so, like I said, I just listened with them uh, two days ago. So we haven't even done the open house yet. So once I see how the open house goes and then maybe the first two weeks of doing some showings, I'll probably get back with you if anything changes. Okay, because we're ready to buy and we can put that money in your pocket and no real estate commissions or fees. So... Uh, real simple for you. Other than that, um, if something changes, feel free to call or text back anytime, okay? Yep, absolutely. All Thank right. you. All right. Have a good day. Bye-bye. I'm going to go list with a realtor. What the hell is that? <laughs> Two days ago, after I sent you an offer. Girl, I'll just keep them in a follow-up. Put it back on the market. So that house was originally a, uh, that was originally an expired listing. So you're going to put it back on the market. Put it on the market, fail, put it on the market, fail, put it on the market, fail. And when it all comes back, you're going to come back and see me. Why we want to be doing that? Why? 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 I guess they got faith in the market. Let me see. Did they put it up on the market yet? Nope. Not yet. But when it was listed, it was listed for, let's see here. Let's go back to the actual history of the listings. Let's tell you the craziness people do. But you can't make them sell it. Know that, everybody. So she originally tried to list this back in October of 2023. What's that? Three months ago, I guess. So I guess it's not been that long of a time. Uh, she put it up for 120. Uh, and then they reduced it to 110 a month later. Then they reduced it to 1075 about a month later. Or I guess three weeks later. Then they had a pending sale on 12.9. And then right before Christmas... I guess something happened and that pending sale fell off and they put it back on the market and then it came off the market again on January 1st. So it's been on and off the market for a month. So, I mean, for three months at least. So uh, I guess she said she's going to put it back up on the market. She already had 107.5 as a purchase price. Uh, and she said she just needed about 10K in her pocket and I offered her exactly what she wanted. So here's the thing, ladies and gentlemen, just for being difficult, and I don't like to do this, but I have to do it. You know, I just, just in my spirit, just for her being difficult and not listening and taking it when I gave it to her, when she comes back to me in two or three weeks and the market tells her no again, that $10,000 is no longer on the table. It just happened to move down about seven or six. See, I call that uh, an expense for me having to keep follow up with you. You made me work for it. So I got to make you pay. If you make me work, you got to pay. Is that fair? I mean, would you do something like that? Or would you honor the 10000 that you offered her a month prior? Yesterday's price is not today's price. Right? That's the game we play. Play with me if you want to, man. I got to charge you for making me work. Who else is in this CRM? Making some follow-up calls with sellers for those that's just jumping up in the live... Let's see here. We call them. We call them. I talk to him. Who's Christopher? This is like a good deal, too. And I never get to speak to this guy. Christopher, house in Webster Groves. Damn, he probably listed this house, man. It's 15 days ago. I tried to call him. He didn't answer. This dude probably listed this house by now. Let's look and see. Let's, let's put our hands together and say, hope he didn't list it yet. Nope, it ain't listed yet. So that's good. Zestimate says 360000 uh, let's see any other information three bedroom one and a half bath houses in Webster Groves in a nice area uh, you was just about to text that <laughs> yeah you gotta charge them you, I mean you made me work I told you I got a solution to your problem and gave you exactly what you're asking for subject to the existing financing but she has so much faith in the market and paying that realtor and I want to work with them that's fine but when they Show you once again that it ain't going to work. You'll come on home, baby. Come on home. So this house here on uh, 
in Webster Groves, three bedroom, one and a half bath. The reason they're selling is they're moving back to Alabama. Sweet home Alabama. And then they did some updates, like some siding and some flooring. It needs some minor repairs still. The roof is around 10 years old. It's not listing with, listed with the realtor, but they are uh, looking to list it. Uh, the mortgage is between 60 and 100. I don't know what that means. Probably the 100. It's a $300,000 house. Whew. Uh, time frame say ASAP. They don't have a price in mind. Uh, they said call him back after five, but I did call him back twice and he didn't answer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to call him again, even though it ain't after five today. This is a couple of weeks later. We're just going to call him anyway. You got to drip on these people sometimes. Uh, boom. Let's call up Christopher. Find more leads than you can even process. That's multiple listing service. That's the MLS for your real estate agents. Absentee owner information. Find the cash buyers and flippers in any market nationwide. Pull a pre-foreclosure list. And don't forget, you got to find those comps. Get nationwide access with multiple filters powered by PropStream at WokeSource.com. Get your seven-day free trial today. WokeSource.com. That's WokeSource.com. <clears throat> Hello, it's Kit. Hey, Kit, this is Chris. How are you today? Uh, good, thanks. Good. You spoke Chris, to Chris him? Yeah, you spoke to my assistant a, a couple of days ago about your house over on Greeley. Did you get that sold yet? Uh, no. Okay. Well, I'm actually the buyer, the one that actually would buy. Um, and so, like I said, you spoke to my assistant. And uh, this, is this a good time? You got a few minutes? Uh, no, I'm actually in the middle of work. Can you call like after 4 p.m.? After 4. All right. That'll work. I'll call you then. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. My boy go by Kit. Not Chris. Kit. Would that sound better? Kit Monroe. <laughs> His name is the same as mine, but he go by Kit. Not Chris. No. I'm trying to, I'm trying to wait. So whenever I acquire $10 million, I'm changing my name to C.L. Monroe. Y'all can't call me Chris no more. That's how rich people do. You get your name changed to uh, initials. <laughs> You're gonna have to call me C.L. Monroe. All right, who the hell is that? Is that Chris? No, C.L. Rich folk name, baby. That's when your money getting right. Let's see here. So for Kit, goes by Kit. Let's put that in here. All after 4 p.m. Because he's at work. It said it on the notes anyway to call after 5. But you know, I'm hard-headed. I'd rather at least still try because I could have called him on a lunch break. Who knows? Okay. So that's Kit. Kit Bond. All right, who else we got here? Scrolling down, scrolling down, scrolling down. Somebody just called while I was on the phone. I think that might have been a seller. Let me see. When I was on the phone earlier, somebody called from a out of town number. Uh, let's see here. Oh, that's somebody talking about marketing. Never mind. A 561 area code. Because they called my phone while I was on the phone. But we ain't talking to them. Uh, let's see here. That guy, that guy. Um, so this person I spoke to, and I guess I can call him up briefly. I don't want to talk to him too long. I spoke to him a couple of weeks ago, 21 days ago. He had a house that he basically over rehabbed, which is a problem. Uh, he got a house over in Pagedale and uh, he wants 139 for it. Them houses don't go for 139. He over rehabbed the house. I mean, if you're lucky, you get 100 over there, like top dollar. Um, but I'm gonna call him back real quick, Adela. Hope you don't keep me on the phone too long. Hello? 
Hey, this is Chris. How are you today? Fine. How are you? Who is this? This is Chris. I spoke to you about your house over on Woodruff. Did you get that sold yet? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you get that one sold yet? Uh, no, I didn't. No, not yet. Oh, okay. Uh, did you, uh, what are you planning on doing with it? Are you still going to try to keep it or are you going to sell it still? Um, well, I, of course I try to, I want to sell it. And, uh, and but also I spoke, um, so you, you are the guy who I met like last week over here, right? Uh, no, I didn't meet you in person, but we did speak about the house and I sent you a referral for um, a way to refinance it if that was an option for you. Okay, so, so we never met. No, 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 not in person. No, this was all over the phone. You said you wanted to meet up, but never. This was all over the phone. Oh, I see. I see. Yeah, I think I remember. Yes, I, yeah, I remember. Yeah, I had so, sent you somebody. You said something about you were going to see about refinancing it or getting a loan on it or something like that. Yeah, I just, I just spoke with somebody in Baltimore, and he said he's going to send me some paperwork to take a look to see what his rates and all that stuff, you know? Oh, Okay. Did you have any? Uh, did you have any other houses that you were looking to sell now? Uh, well, I have no other one, no other one but it's um, it's rented with a Section Eight, so the contract expires on April. So um, I don't know uh, if, if the Section Eight doesn't increase uh, the rent amount. I'm gonna kick them out. I'm gonna evict them, and uh, I just uh, renovate it and, and sell it. Try to sell it. Oh, so a, whole, a a different house you're talking about? Yeah, yeah. Just on the Oh, okay. Yeah, so I just wanted to follow up with you. You know, I always like to check in and make sure everything's going smoothly for you. So, um, okay. so, so you, are, you are an investor or you're an agent? I'm a real estate investor, a professional real estate investor. I solve all types of real estate problems. I tell people, bring me the problem and I'll solve them. So you are kind of a doctor in this, huh? <laughs> I'm a professional. I solve problems. That's all I say. Bring me something, uh, some some trouble, and I'll find a way to pop that bubble. Well, you have a problem right here. So you solve it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, there, there there is a way that you can get you know get that house sold. Um, you know, I don't know. Uh, have you ever looked into you know taking payments over time or something like that? Uh, what, what do you mean? So what we've done in the past in situations like yours, because I know you did a really good renovation on this house, is what we have done in the past is give the seller, you know, some money down and then make payments over time so that you can actually start recouping your money without having to be a landlord. We take full responsibility of the property, the maintenance, repairs, tenants, everything that deals with real estate. We just make sure that we elevate you from being a landlord to now you can be the bank. You think something like that would help you out? I don't know. Maybe one day, maybe we can meet. Maybe we can meet and, uh, you know, because uh, I'm, I don't know if we'll go to your city to, to do some work to another property, like to some people, because I'm activated like a general contractor as well, because, you know, it's, I cannot just make the money. I make the money the sleeping on, when I sell, but in the meantime, I have to do some construction or to do some high-end kitchens, bathrooms. Totally. I mean, we can, I can renovate houses for, from A to Z to other people. So this is my old uh, repeated customer. So right now I do uh, some things in the, in the basement there. So, but I'd like to meet with you. Uh, maybe you can stop by over here on Udra. Then, um, then we'll talk and yeah. it would be nice to see what kind of programs we have. Yeah. When will you be going over there again? Uh, to, today and tomorrow, but probably tomorrow because today I'm going to be a little tight. Well, I can be probably tomorrow morning over here uh, before I start to, because I still have to do some work over there, but I can be here like, uh, let's say 10 o'clock. So maybe you can talk for an hour, then uh, then, uh, then we'll go from there. Sounds good. Because yeah, I, yeah. So, so, so give, me a, I, give me a call when you're heading that way in the morning and I'll definitely come over there and meet you, no problem. Okay, yeah, because if we meet somewhere in the middle of the day, it kind of breaks my day, uh, you know, because I'm not gonna do too much work uh, before then after that probably it's, it's not enough it's better either before or either after you know to, to perfect you. so in this way we have a little more time to talk okay that's perfect i'll definitely do that so yeah like i said just reach out to me in the morning when you're heading over there and i'll definitely come by uh that'll work okay. all right i'll talk to you then i'll call I'll, yeah i should call you tomorrow after 9 30. perfect see you then okay okay right. bye -bye. so right, your name is chris right? chris yes and i'll send you my information again 
Yeah, yeah, just just text that to me. I know if we if we text each other, so in that way I have I have your information because sometimes after 20 phone calls or something, then if I look through my phone, I don't have your phone anymore. But if you text me, then I have you on my on my phone. Perfect. I'll text you and I. I'll text you, and I'll also send your referral for another place if you're looking to get the house refinanced or something, okay? That would be great. All right, thank you. Thank you. All right, bye-bye. Thank you, bye-bye. So, ladies and gentlemen, when you're doing these calls, sometimes you come across people. And I don't know if y'all seen my YouTube channel. I have a bunch of videos talking about different stuff like this. So, who are you on the phone with? You can be on the phone with a wholesaler. You can be on the phone with a real estate agent. You can be on the phone with just a general investor, somebody who does high-end renovations like this. So this guy here, I am going to try to meet him probably tomorrow simply because he don't know he's going to end up being my private money lender. Don't tell him, though. He don't know it yet, though. He's going to be a lender or he's going to be somewhere in my orbit because he's he's a go-getter. You know, he may not have all the answers, but I don't you know, disqualify people because they don't have all the answers. I don't even have all the answers. I have a lot of answers, but I don't even have all the answers. But this guy is, he over rehabbed that house. And I'm going to tell him that in person. You know, you can say so much on the phone, but when you meet a person in real life, they feel like they know you. They feel like they trust you. Next thing you know, I'm borrowing 200000 for him for a house. <laughs> he got the money to do it, so. He's foreign. He got that foreign money. He got era money. I don't know if it's really that, though. <laughs> gems so that's the thing so when you're talking to these people you really have to figure out who you're on the phone with and deal with them accordingly everybody isn't a motivated seller everybody isn't you know a hard-headed real estate agent everybody isn't a know-nothing wholesaler some people need some extra guidance and maybe can be part of your team they're actually doing the business you want to be in right real estate drop out of school and go learn real estate serious so let me text him uh, I thought I texted him before, but let's see here. Uh, I'm going to send him that. I think I sent him that same text before. Yeah, I did. Here is another option for you. And so for those of you that are looking for funding for your deals, I do have a program set up over at the website futurecashflowfunding.com futurecashflowfunding.com go check that out futurecashflowfunding.com that's what I'm sending him as well cuz he was asking about cuz I'm thinking that's the only other way he can get that money out of that property is that the right thing oh snap did I give him the wrong information hold on let me check that I think I messed that up Future cash flow. Did I get the wrong damn domain out? Hold on. Maybe I gave him the wrong thing. I didn't send it yet, but hold on. That's why I got to double, triple check something. What? Wait a minute. Something ain't right here. Time out. Time out. Um, let me check something right quick. That's the only thing when you start dealing with this stuff. Did you train your VA yourself? Pretty much, yeah. So I try to do uh, occasional meetings where we actually get on and discuss things. Um, I, I like to do more of them. I need to do them weekly, really, just to, you know, keep them tightened up. I don't think they're doing bad, but you can always improve, you know. Let me see here. Let me make sure this domain is right. What the hell? This is not right. Where did you find your VA? So I was with the company and that company shut down and the VA stayed with me. Is that a good way to inherit some callers? I mean, it's kind of a loophole for that, ain't it? I was with a company. Um, so I got a good deal on them too. So we pay $5 an hour and that $5 covers that VA and the manager that's managing them. So I got two VAs that's calling and texting and somebody that manages them basically to make sure, you know, keep up with them because I can't do it. And that's something they don't tell you when you're doing, you know, looking for virtual assistance and things like that, that you need somebody to be, you know, actually watching over. Are they even working? Are they just on Facebook? Let me see something here. Yeah, that's right. Future cash flow funding. Why is that? Okay, there it is. Okay. 
Oh, I spelled it wrong. I knew it was something. I'm like, yeah, the link works. Future cash flow funding. Future cash flow funding dot com. Send. Boom. Let's see. Did that work? Hope so. Perfect. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. So, yeah, if you are looking for funding, you simply come over here to Future Cash Flow Funding, fill out that short application, and you can get funding for your business, funding for your real estate opportunities, uh, equipment financing, all of that stuff based off your business. So, uh, as long as you have a real business, we can fund you, baby. FutureCashFlowFunding.com. There you go. Perfect. Thanks, Shay. Uh, pin comment should work. I just tried it. I don't know. Maybe it was me. FutureCashflowfunding.com. All right. Um, let's see who else we got here. Get out of all of this stuff. I had to check that. Um, that lady there. Did I speak to her? Uh, this foreclosure lady. Yeah, let me follow up with her. I don't even have her in my damn CRM. I just happen to have it on my screen. That's not good to do that. Then you can forget about somebody. You'd be thinking that uh, something going on and it ain't. Let's see here. Change that. Change that. Change that. Got too much going on here. All these windows. Too many windows. So, yep. Let's see. That was Miss. What was her name? Matter of fact, let me put her in the CRM so I don't lose track of her. I don't want to do that. Because this lead actually came from Facebook, from the marketplace. They messaged me talking about they want to buy something at our store at St. Louis Consignment Gallery. They want to buy something from the store. Come to find out, she's going through some things. And she said she got a bunch of stuff to sell and even the house. And I was like, oh, well, let's talk about it. So I got on the phone with her and uh, we're talking about her thing. Her name is Danielle. Let me get her phone number here. Phone number, copy. So she was kind of different. She is behind about four months on her payments. And she does need to sell. But her biggest thing, her biggest selling point was finding another house in the same school district. So that's kind of tricky. Um, she don't just want another house. She want another house in the same school district because it's a court order on their divorce or something like that. So she has a divorce coming up in about the next three weeks, um, this lady here. But let me put her in the CRM real quick before I call her because I don't want to forget about her going forward. That would be disastrous. Danielle. Her phone number, paste, her address. Down in Imperial. We just did in the deal in Imperial. Trying to get another one. Uh, Imperial, Missouri, just south of St. Louis. Um, and we also have a local real estate meetup coming up on the 27th of January. For those of you that are in the area here, the 27th of January, we have a meetup, 4 p.m. Uh, it's going to be held downtown St. Louis at the Armory STL. If you want more information on that, just go to wokerealestate.com forward slash events woke real estate.com slash events and you can go to that it's a free event don't cost you a dime and it's going to be january the 27th let's just see that real quick while i got it up boom there you go screenshot that that's the next real estate meetup while I had it on the screen. Okay, now back to this lady here. Um, put that there. Thank you, Shay. Shay's the best. She the best. Uh, let's put the address in here. Uh, put the address in here. Go to, boom, click that. We called her from that number, and we're going to say it's hot, owner occupied. Uh, what other information do we have? I think that's it. Uh, Facebook. 
And that wasn't even a Facebook ad. How you love that? <laughs> so we're going to save that lead. Because if I don't do that, I'll forget. Now, I did want to speak to her too. She wasn't going to answer. I shouldn't say that. I don't know anything. I don't know nothing. You don't know what you don't know, and you don't know what you don't know you don't know. So you really don't know. But at least she's in the CRM now. I can remember to see her later. I think that's going to do it for today, ladies and gentlemen. Let me see. Who is James? Did I talk to a James? And where did this lead come from? Yeah, this is a house over on Milton. They want to sell it for $125, which is full market value. Uh, the reason for selling was bankruptcy. Uh, let's go back up. Two bedroom, one bath, selling in the next 30 days. I, we reached out to him about 22 days ago. Hold on, let me see. No, our first touch with him was a month ago, and I still haven't spoke to this guy. So I've been trying to call him, but uh, I can't get him to answer the phone. Let me see, is it listed or something? Nope, it's still available, it looks like. So we're going to call him up. Mr. James. Trying to sell a house on East Milton. And we're going to record all our calls for quality and training purposes. Yep, phone number looks good. Boom. Let's see what James talking about. Probably ain't talking about nothing. I guess I got to follow up with them like a bill collector. Hmm. Please leave your message for 314. I'll give them about 30 seconds and we'll try again. Dust yourself off and try again. But it looked like he won full blown retail, which is not a problem. We got to still speak to him. Okay, so this came off of the distress list off the MLS. And I don't even know what that is. I saw an option on a MLS for distress. So I pulled the list, skip trace it, and we got some leads from it. And he said he's selling because of a bankruptcy. So I don't know what that's about. But So basically financial problems, which is a problem. Let's try to call James again. He'll probably go by Jim. You think he go by Jim or James? What do you think? Put it in the comments. Does he go by Jim or does he go by James? Let's say James on here, but you know. Most people don't go by their real name. Their government name. James. The Jad Boss. Please leave your message for three. One. My name is James, but my friends call me Jim. Uh, no answer as usual. But I've been trying to reach this guy for a month. I didn't mean to let that much time go by, though, to be honest. But sometimes it sinks in the pain. The pain sinks in. It might be perfect timing. So we'll just follow up again. Matter of fact, I'm going to put a reminder in here to, for me to call him again. 
I'm going to put a reminder in the system for tomorrow at 11 a.m. Reminder, create task, boom. Oh, I can't do that. Uh, close the call. There we go. All right, that's the end of him. Who else? What up, Angela? How are you? All right, uh, making some follow-up calls. I'm almost done for today, I think. I'm just scrolling through to make sure. There's not anybody I missed. This Mary lady is somebody I definitely want to speak to because she got that million dollar property downtown St. Louis. But she never answers the phone. What times do you be going live on IG? About this time. But what I would say, uh, go to my profile, hit that little dots on there and put the notifications on so it'll tell you when I'm going live. It'll notify you when Chris Monroe is going live. Hit the post notifications. I don't know if you can do it from within here or if you got to go out of this live and go to my profile and hit be notified. Because uh, it's usually this time of day or sometimes a little later. I'm just trying to reach out to these sellers. And, and many times it's better to reach out to them after 4 or 5 o'clock at night, to be honest. So let me call Ms. Mary. They don't ever answer the phone. I got to be her friend because she got a million dollar property. Let me go be nice. Put on my best outfit. You have reached the confidential voicemail of Dr. Mary Sink. Damn, the confidential voicemail. Not just a voicemail, confidential. We don't want you leaking in and listening in to my voicemails. She never answers the phone, though, so it's one of these people. I'll just double tap her, but... Uh, I specialize in houses. I don't really do land, but I would. If the numbers made sense and there was a deal, I sell water to a well. You have reached the count. She'll never answer her phone. But yeah, when it comes to land, I mean, like I said, I buy more so in St. Louis. Um, so it's a couple of things I guess we can say about land. Uh, land doesn't necessarily pay me. I like to buy properties where I'm cash flowing the day I buy it. So many times I close on a deal and I already have everything going to where it basically would uh, come to me as a uh, opportunity to cash flow. If the land is generating money, then I'm all for it for me. But if I'm going to just get land, it would be pure wholesale. And another thing about land uh, here in St. Louis, um, depending on the area you're in, um, you have to buy in a place where a lot of development is going for that land. Because in some places like North City, they'll have a house, but there's a they have the lot next door. But it really doesn't add any value per se unless somebody's going to build there. But generally, they're not building in those areas where there's a lot of land available. Uh, you can get land pretty cheap here, to be honest. Um, but that's just in this market. Now, if you're in Florida and some of these other places in Texas, land is valuable. So in this particular market, it's not a hot thing. I mean, probably is opportunities out here. But I like to go where I can actually cash flow. That's why they call me Chris Cash Flow Money Monroe. Um, for your web page, do you have a squeeze page or a carrot site? So I have a couple of websites. Um, I do have a carrot site that sends leads sometime. I have a WordPress site that sends leads sometime. Um, then I have another site. So those two sites are for sellers, seller generated leads. So I send that to sellers when I get off the phone with them. They can go on the site, see testimonials of other people we've worked with, things like that. That's powerful because we want other people saying you're good to say, Chris, help me. He solved my problem. He the best. Boom. We want people saying that because that helps you get business in the future. That shows your credibility to show that you're going to do what you say you're going to do. Um, and then so we got the two sites for the uh, sellers. 
We have a site for cash buyers. If you're a cash buyer, we have a site specifically for you when you want to buy our wholesale deals to come up. Then we have another site for rent to own tenant buyers that's specifically for tenant buyers. So we have to split all this stuff up because, and they all have their own phone number. They all have their own website. So to separate this stuff, because people call in about all different types of stuff and we want to put them in the right point from there. Just to give you a little overview. I live in Florida, but invest elsewhere. You better invest in Florida. They do land like a mofo there. Those infield lots and stuff. They've been killing the game down there in Florida. We just got back from Florida, what, the other day. Just got back from Miami, Sunny Isles. You need to be on the cash buyers list. You buy in St. Louis? Yeah, I'm about to wrap it up anyway, uh, Tennessee Slim. Thanks for joining in. So for those jumping in, my name is Chris Monroe, the student master teacher, Mr. I Stay Woke. I do real estate here in St. Louis, buy, sell, trade, maneuver, create deals, buy subject to, sell of finance, et cetera. That's what I do. Uh, Angela says, too high for my pocket. Um, price is made up. You know, if you get good terms, I don't really care about the price. If we get little to nothing down, low monthly payments for a long period of time, I don't really care about the price. That's why we come back to what I was talking about earlier in this video. The entry fee. How does it? How much does it cost to get into the deal? Say you got a hundred thousand dollar house. You want to be in it under ten thousand. But I know they don't have houses that cheap down in Florida. But Florida isn't too high if you got a person with a uh, you know with a situation. I, I worked a couple of leads down there in Florida. I haven't bought anything there, but deals are done in Florida every day. Opportunities come up in every market in America. Every market. Because there's always death, there's always divorce, disease, uh, inherited properties that are unwanted, uh, foreclosures, financial problems. There's always problems. Wherever there's people that own real estate, there's problems. It's your job to make sure they know that you exist so that you can buy those deals if you want direct to seller. And many times you can go straight on the market and get deals from uh, real estate agents that are listed. You look on the market and you're like, damn, that house has been listed 100 days. Why hasn't it sold yet? Reach out to that agent. Reach out to that seller. They got a problem. Why hasn't it sold? It shouldn't be on the market no 100 days, 200 days. They got a problem. If you can get direct to seller, though, you don't have to pay that real estate commission. Or keep in mind, everything's negotiable. You can negotiate the real estate commission. You can negotiate the wholesale fee if you come across a wholesaler. You can negotiate the price. Everything's negotiable. Everybody can get that work. Keep that in mind. Everybody can get that work. So don't feel like, you know, the prices are too high or this or that. You just have to get your game strong where you can bring that money on home. Price is made up. As long as somebody else is willing to pay that price more than what I got it for, it's a made up number. If I get a $400,000 house and somebody willing to pay $500,000 for it, sell that bad boy. It's made up. So hopefully that helped everybody out. Don't forget to follow me on all social media outlets at Chris Monroe STL. That's Snapchat, that's Twitter, that's Instagram, that's Facebook, that's YouTube, that's TikTok, that's Clubhouse, that's X. We on X, we on Fanbase, all those sites, anywhere you want to go, Chris Monroe STL. And that's the website for those of you that's looking for the, uh, you know, kind of coaching and things like that. You're looking to learn more about real estate, wokerealestate.com. Or if you want to make a direct call to me to set up a time to talk about your situation, your deal, things like that, you can book a call with me at chrismonroestl.com. chrismonroestl.com. So with all that being said, do what you do. Be who you be. And I'll see you before you see me. Peace.